killing is never right. Peace is the only answer. Our programs offer many languages. Please visit suprememastertv.com forward slash schedule. The ancient legends and scriptures of four religions, Tibetan Bon, Buddhism, Hinduism, and Jainism, all refer to Mount Kailash with the utmost importance and respect. Holy Mount Kailash, Tibetan Sacred Land, Part 1 of 3. Continue watching to find out more. If you wish to greet the Limbu people in the beautiful Limbu indigenous language, you may say Sibaro, that means hello. <music> Virtuous viewers, I am Shri. With joy and admiration, the sincere Limbu people of Nepal, India, and Bhutan wish that you may continuously thrive in God's wisdom and divine embrace. Welcome to part one of a three-part series entitled Holy Mount Kailash, Tibetan Sacred Land. At the heart of Himalayan Tibet, standing 6,638 meters, or 21,778 feet high in the Kalash range. Mount Kalash is widely considered to be one of the most sacred sites on earth. Its name is derived from the word Kalasa, in Sanskrit meaning crystal. The Tibetan name for the mountain is Gyang Rinpoche, which can be translated as precious jewel of snows. The colossal peak is a figure of importance for countless religious adherents and spiritual seekers of different faiths. Every year, millions of pilgrims make the arduous trek to Mount Kalash, where the high altitude air challenges the limits of human endurance in their sacred quest to pay their reverent respects. The formidable shape of Mount Kalash has been etched over eons. Layers of granite coated eternally in a pure shawl of white glow as gold at dawn and dusk. A divine arm reaches and an invisible hand draws sages and rishis to its side. Mount Kailash is considered virtually unclimbable. In fact, any attempt to do so is prohibited by both holy writ and current political laws. Several determined mountaineers have abandoned attempts to make the forbidden ascent, driven back by dramatic changes in the weather, an avalanche, or the inner realization that they were indeed committing holy trespass. The Brahmaputra River, the Kagra or Kanali River, the Sutlej River, and the Indus River all have Mount Kailash as their source, and in turn, they feed the Indian subcontinent with the precious gift of water.
Lake Mansarovar, situated near the base of the southern face of Mount Kalash, is one of the highest bodies of fresh water in the world. Its constantly calm surface is said to be a source of healing. In contrast, the nearby turbulence of the crescent moon-shaped saltwater lake Rakshastal, situated at a lower elevation, is said to be a place of penance holding demonic forces. The Kolash Mansarovar area has been nominated as a UNESCO World Heritage Site for both its outstanding natural beauty and also its cultural heritage. Each day, pilgrims join processions around the base of Mount Kailash, a ritual that can take anywhere from three days to several weeks to complete. The 52-kilometer circumambulation is known as Kora in Tibetan. Some devotees can be seen performing full-length prostrations with each and every step, displaying enormous physical and mental strength as well as piety. Very few pilgrims nowadays are adept in the art of Langompa, an esoteric skill in Tibetan Buddhism, in which a yogic breathing technique allows a practitioner to run at an incredible speed for days without stopping. This enables high-speed, long-distance running and permits the completion of the Kora in a single day. In her book, Magic and Mystery in Tibet, Belgian-French explorer Alexandra David Neal described witnessing a monk practicing Lang Gompa. Il était arrivé à une petite distance de nous. Je pouvais distinguer nettement sa face impassible et ses yeux largement ouverts qui semblaient contempler fixement un point situé quelque part haut dans l'espace vide. Le lama ne courait point. Il paraissait s'enlever de terre à chacun de ses pas et avancer par bon, comme s'il avait été doué de l'élasticité d'une balle. Nous pouvions toujours remarquer la régularité étonnante de ses pas élastiques se succédant, aussi mesurés que les oscillations d'un pendule. Let's take a moment to get some exercise and run in the backyard. We'll be right back here on Supreme Master Television. Vegan Leader, Wise Leader. Welcome back to Holy Mount Kailash, Tibetan Sacred Land, Part 1 of 3. The ancient legends and scriptures of four religions, Tibetan Bon, Buddhism, Hinduism, and Jainism, all refer to Mount Kailash with the utmost importance and respect. Over many millennia, several renowned yogis spent time meditating in caves near Mount Kalash, some of them establishing permanent monasteries. Many sages are said to be meditating there, and their subtle spiritual bodies and presence can only be detected by developed spiritual practitioners. The Kora pilgrimage to the ancient cave abode of the seven rishis or Sapta rishis 
the mind-born sons of Brahma, takes place on the nearby Mount Nandi or Nandi Parvat. This is the closest any pilgrim is allowed to get to the holy peak of Mount Kalash. According to Hindu scripture, the seven immortal Sapta Rishis work for the evolution of humanity, uplifting planet Earth by enabling the will of the Divine Lord Shiva, who dwells within Mount Kalash, with his heavenly consort Shakti, who is also known as Parvati. According to the Hindu text Shiva Purana, when Shakti left Mount Kalash alone against the advice of Lord Shiva, she experienced great humiliation. Lord Shiva was inconsolable and became completely reclusive. Meditating alone within Mount Kalash and shunning everything in the physical universe, which resulted in great turmoil for the world. Later, a plan was conceived in which Shakti reincarnated as Parvati, returning to her mate Lord Shiva at Mount Kalash to restore balance to the universe. In 1993, Supreme Master Ching Hai also mentioned this legendary story. Shiva was um, one of the past masters, right? He was supposed to be the god of destruction. He destroyed yes. negativity. Yeah, actually, not destroyed yes. people. Well, some people misunderstand. So they worry that he destroyed him. So always keep blackmailing him with all kind of fruit and cakes. <laughs> it's not the, the thing. So in the past, he meditated very deeply in the Himalayas. Yeah. He never woke up from meditation, never, ever. Nothing steers him. This is the legion from India, right? I don't know if it's true, okay? I just tell you, power of God. They meditate all the time in the Himalayas, deep in the meditation, never steer. But some of the gods in heaven were afraid that he didn't have a wife, so he will not pass down other generation, you know, the holy seat or something like that, the sacred bloodline, yeah. So they worry very much, yeah, because he was so holy and they wanted yeah. to have another as a generation of, of, of this kind. So they, they send out a beautiful, 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 uh, say, fairy, yes. It, her name was Parvati. So then she was very beautiful and her figure was enough to make all the men fell down <laughs> in battle. But she couldn't steal him. She tried all her best to kind of dance around him and make all kinds of things, but he never stayed out of meditation. So finally she was fed up, fed up, yeah. So she went to the other side of the mountain, another, a little bit longer way, selected a mountain range, and she sat there and meditated. She said, now, oh, this is nonsense. I meditate on God and then I get liberation and eternal bliss. That's better than to chase a man who is like stone. <laughs> Have no feeling, nothing. And me, so beautiful like this. And he never steers. Wow. And she was fed up, angry and frustrated. So she went to the other mountain. Oh, I forgot the mountain name. Kailash? No, huh? What's it? Kailash, yeah? Oh, hmm, not bad, huh? Not bad for a Vietnamese Indian. <laughs> So she went to Mount Kailash, which is the most, I can say, the most famous and holy mountain, according to Indian belief. Yeah? It's very high, and it has uh, also a very beautiful lake in the vicinity. Mansarova, yes. So she stayed there and meditated, yeah? And after some time, she attained the blissful state. Near the northern face of Mount Kalash, seven stupas can be found. They symbolize the Axis Mundi representation of the holy mountain as the legendary Mount Meru, the center of all universes. Axis Mundi is the Latin astronomical term for Earth's axis between the celestial poles. In Hindu, Jain, and Buddhist cosmology, Mount Meru is the Axis Mundi, the central point 
of all physical, metaphysical, and spiritual universes. The lapis blue color on the side of Mount Meru facing Earth makes Mount Meru invisible to us. However, Mount Kailash is believed to be its earthly manifestation. Mount Kailash is certainly a place of great spiritual importance and we look forward to learning more about it. Luminescent viewers, it's been a pleasure to have your company today. Join us again on Friday, July 9th for part 2 of Holy Mount Kalash, Tibetan sacred land. Coming up next is Bats, our invisible friends with Kristen Tache, vegetarian, part 2 of 2, right after noteworthy news here on Supreme Master Television. May heaven's grace light your path to spiritual upliftment every step of the way. Our programs offer many languages. Please visit suprememastertv.com forward slash schedule and suprememastertv.com forward slash WAU. Nos programs offer plusieurs langues. Veuillez visiter suprememastertv.com bar oblique schedule et suprememastertv.com bar oblique WAU. Nuestros programas ofrecen varios idiomas. Visiten suprememastertv.com barra inclinada schedule y suprememastertv.com barra inclinada WAU. Chương trình của chúng tôi cung ứng nhiều ngôn ngữ. Xin xem suprememastertv.com gạch chéo schedule và suprememastertv.com gạch chéo vkau. Vegan, life-gifting action 